Praise the Lord. I'm presenting the deliverance testimony of our sister that came all the way from Maryland. And I want her actually to introduce herself, first of all, before we go to the main gist and heartbeat of the interview uh, of our deliverance testimony. Uh, sister, can you introduce yourself and then uh, tell us how you knew about that ministry? Hello, everyone. My name is Almi. I came for all the way from the state of Maryland down to Georgia to visit Dr. Uzo to get my deliverance and I actually found out about this ministry through YouTube. So for any of those who are watching this video through YouTube out there and you, you know you want to come visit, please don't hesitate and don't wait to get your deliverance. So how did you find us? So actually my um, sister found the ministry online uh, through YouTube and um, somebody from another prayer group that she actually had had mentioned uh, the ministry and to check it out on YouTube. So she checked it out and we actually came for the very first time earlier in May, um, 2021. So what made you come all the way? Because there are churches, there are ministry, and I learned you are in a very good Bible believing church, a living church. And then you have, you know, seasoned ministers that teach the word of faith and things of the spirit. So why didn't you really get deliverance in your church? Uh, because it's like you made a lot of effort to come. So first of all, what really brought you? What and what symptoms or what you saw or problems or challenges that brought you to us? Well, I've known for a, for a while now that I, I needed deep deliverance. I knew there was a lot of strongholds um, from both sides of my family, but I knew that deep down in my spirit, I knew that there was more because I had to take a, a break, assess my life and, you know, see, okay, what was working, what wasn't. And nothing was really working. I couldn't get a job. I couldn't get a proper job in my field. You know, I have a master's degree. I have an MBA and I could not get a proper job. And, you know, and then I would have dreams of seeing myself, you know, at the altar and I wouldn't see the face of the person that I'm married to or seeing myself at a wedding. So I knew I was married to the spirit realm. And I knew that it was very deep because I, you know, would have failure at the edge of breakthrough. I would, you know, um, have jobs not reach out to me. I would meet my helpers, the people that were supposed to help me in my career and they would just disappear. So there was always like nothing was working and I knew that there there was something deeper than that. And I've been to places, I've you know, been to churches. I'm a child of God, I was born in a Christian home. You know, I I speak in tongues. I've done everything, so to see, pay time, done everything a child of God could do. And there was still a stronghold, still something that needed to be broken. And I and I had, you know, went to different places and they just couldn't get to the root of the problem i mean they would help with different aspects of um my deliverance but the root cause hadn't really been dealt with and the spirit i was dealing with which you know dr Uzu also talk about you know had manifested in multiple occasions this is the same the same you know strong man that had manifested in multiple um churches and multiple, you know, deliverance sessions and nobody had the authority and the power enough to fully cast it out until today with Dr. Uzo. Now, you said something about uh, limitations. Were you having water dreams or dreams about snakes or dream about rings or wedding? Uh, I, I just want to know the key symptoms because people don't really know or decipher or decode or demystify or even diagnose the root of their problem because that's why they go from one place to the other because you said that even one woman of God was praying with you about limitations and then uh, uh, late marriage or no marriage or delayed marriage and then you mentioned somebody waiting you at the altar with toxedo and you didn't see the face and then uh, other symptoms and you were also saying that the demons uh you know manifested in at least three occasions without them casting it out 
um, I just want you to throw more light on it. First of all, the symptom that made you go from church to church or deliverance to deliverance or session uh, to session or minister to minister. Uh, I want you to really throw more light on the symptoms so that people uh, will really know because you were in the world, you were in a living church, you were born again, uh, you were sowing your uh, seed, um, you were confessing the word. In fact, you were praying and fasting. I want you to, yeah, I want you to zero on the symptoms and then what you've done that brought you to this stage because I discovered that you've done so many things even before you meet me. And even meeting me, it wasn't one session. Just, you know, go ahead and be free to tell the people, first of all, the symptom or the key symptom that brought you here. And secondly, the effort you've made and even what the demons say, because sometimes we learn more from what the demon is, is saying under the Holy Spirit than what they are not saying. Because the church is teaching another thing and what is on ground or reality is another thing. Go ahead. Yes. So October 2020, so is when I did a 40-day fast because I said, you know, I was coming to the age of marriage and I knew that, you know, there may be a battle there. So I just decided to, you know, just do a 40 day fast and, you know, pray and pray for marriage. So I actually went to a ministry uh, that had a program that was centered, you know, for deliverance and freedom in, in here in the U S and uh, I had a manifestation on the 40th day of my fast. So that was literally day number 40. I had a manifestation where the strong man did manifest. It was very, very violent, very, very, um, rude or cursing, cursing the minister, you know, cause not to have commotion. And it said that, um, I come, I came from a wicked family, um, that I was, you know, I am, I am a firstborn and then it was trying to kill me because I was a firstborn and it said that I am a child of God and they know I'm a child of God, but I belong to them. I belong to their kingdom and that I've been, and the, this, the strong man has been there for so long that I belong to them. So during that ministration, they have, you know, the ministers, you know, had prayed for me, but the spirit wasn't cast out. So, and that was just a traveling ministry. So I went back, you know, to the, uh, my like home base and, you know, to pray and get follow up. Then um, cross overnight of 2021, I had another manifestation. The spirit manifested again. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, they couldn't cast out, they couldn't cast out the demon. The demon was running its mouth for a long time. I was in a manifested state. You know, the church, you know, kind of was just looking around, didn't really know what to do. I mean, the the um, spirit even, you know, was kind of disgracing them, saying like, you guys don't read your Bible. You know, why can't you cast out a simple demon? Intimidated them and, you know, running its mouth up and down and no one could do anything. And I knew, I'm like, okay, I came, you know, this is cross of a night, demon manifested, and unfortunately the churches didn't have enough power to cast out the demon. Then that was the second time. So the third time now, I went to another um, event, another crusade, and had, of course, had another manifestation. And, you know, this one, I, they didn't even, they just had kind of ignored me. I think they knew how strong it was that they just kind of, kind of disregarded me to to say the least they disregarded me didn't really give me the men you know the prayers that i needed and once you know it was time 11 o'clock hit okay it's time for us to go our time is up in this in this um, hotel room you know everybody go home mind you i was still in a manifest state and there was one pastor that generally tried to help and was praying but it didn't have enough authority didn't have enough power and the spirit called you know the pastor out saying who are you who are like I don't want to talk to you. I don't know who you are. And, you know, calling the people out in the, in the um, church and saying that you all don't read your Bible. You guys don't, you know, you all don't know, you know, how to cast out a demon. And even went down to the details of saying that, you know, you people don't know that demons can call Jesus. Because the pastor, while trying to, you know, deliver me, saying, that, no, demons, demons can't say the name Jesus. And then, then. The demon, you know, was talking back and said, who told you that they couldn't say the name Jesus? Because a lot of people believe that demons can't say Jesus. Their demons do have rankings and high ranking demons. They can say Jesus. So don't be deceived by, oh, well, they said Jesus, then, 
It's not a demon. That is a deception. Also, I want Christians who are watching this video to understand that Christians can be possessed. You can be saved. You can be born in a Christian home. You can pray. You can fast. You can worship. You can tithe. You can go to church five days a week. And guess what? You can still have one demon torment your life until you get to the root and get your deliverance. And I knew something was wrong. And I've been praying. I've been fasting. And I knew. I said, God, something must happen. And finally, I came to Dr. Uzo here. And today, we were finally able to cast out the demon after the fourth manifestation and it just he had enough power to finally to finally cast it out and i thank god for, for his life and for his ministry and for all the people watching out there if you you know you feel that something is wrong and you need help come get your deliverance so that way you can live the fruitful life that god has already destined for every child of god let me ask you what were the key symptoms what was your dream like that made you know that some ancestral spirit husband or a strong man or wickedness or yoke of limitation or you know something that made you to run around because I an average person could have given up yes it, I've had um multiple dreams so I've seen I've had a dream where I've been at the altar I didn't see the face of the person I've had a dream where I was at a like traditional wedding and I didn't you know see you know who i was married to i've had dreams where i'm in the water like i literally have seen mommy water where i had a dream where i was in um in the ocean in the ocean and then i saw a mermaid spirit come up from within the the waters within the waters and said that they won't let me go i've had dreams where um i've had another dream um where I'm eating food constantly, constantly eating food in the new constantly. I've even seen um, dead people. One of my, I've even seen, my grandmother has passed away almost 10 years now. And even recently, I had a dream maybe like a month ago where I was talking to her, we were, have, you know, talking. I've seen dead people, dead people, having conversations with them, interacting with them, dream manipulation. Like I've had a lot of dream manipulation, you know, or I see myself, you know, had a dream while I see myself at a bus stop. You know, I've had dreams seeing myself in a bus stop. So I just monitor my dreams and, and see that there was a lot of, you know, activity there that wasn't of God. I knew that there was definitely something I need deliverance from. And also, of course, sex in the dream. That was the main thing. I was always seeing like sex in the dream or, you know, um, a, a spirit, you know, doing some sexual act to me in the dream. And so that was the main, the main indicators. And when I saw that those, I kept having reoccurring dreams of sex in the dream, food in the dream, get, see myself married, water spirit, all of those mixed together. I knew that it was a very, very deep battle. Okay. The demon, the strong man said, oh, you are mine. I will not let you go. You belong to me. And was even trying to fight me. And then you even told me, that one of your um, auntie married twice and the husband died in the bloodline, remember? Correct, yeah. And then you started a business. The business is not even taken off the ground. Correct. And you seem to be experiencing yoke of limitation, blockages, and all kinds of hindrances. And you also tell me that when you date people, I mean, they get interested, six months later or thereabout, they disappear. Yeah. Without trace, no just cause. Uh, you didn't do anything wrong. Uh, you weren't uh, brash or rash. Um, you weren't disrespectful. And yet, no matter what you did, and then there's this rejection and all that. So I want you to throw more light on that because a lot of people say, oh, a Christian cannot be possessed. I'm born again. Jesus has done it all. Uh, you don't need to fight no battle. Satan is defeated. Um, a Christian cannot be possessed. Um, it's all in your mind. You are hallucinating. You are thinking too much. Uh, just stay with the word. You see all kinds of things that people assume. I want you to throw more light on that, especially the fact that your auntie and you are the first uh, uh, born of your family, and then things that was happening like you know um, having children outside wedlock, or your auntie in the family married and the husband keep on dying or be widowed twice or there but i wanted to shed more light on that you know because our audience want to know uh because no two deliverances are alike 
but they want to know the uniqueness of your case and they will want to learn from it and then we want them to learn the lesson and gain the blessing and then also your testimony will help a whole lot because each deliverance i do i learn more because when i i even tried the first time to deliver you the demon wasn't manifesting i asked you to sit down and you were helping other people and later on i called you up again and then that was when you know trouble uh started in paradise i wanted to throw more like go back a little bit to the background especially your auntie marrying and the husband dying and then some of the things you were experiencing uh throw more light on all that symptoms and then you know what really happened with this uh, ancestral spirit spouse and then you know you being the firstborn and what has happened because we want to learn because a lot of people don't really know that's true mm -hmm. a lot of you a lot of churches now are not focused on deep deliverance and that is the reality it's very rare to find you know pentecostal bible believing tongue speaking churches that believe in deliverance you know the prophetic deep deliverance and understand you know what's really going on and i've, I've been to many churches so i'm telling, telling you from my experience yes a church may pray speak in tongues and everything but they don't have the power and i want to make sure people understand that prophecy okay reading the bible okay but if you don't have power a demon can because they're spirits they can identify who is who in the spirit and when they know that you don't have the power or you may not have the mark of christ they it can intimidate you and they run their mouth and they're able to run havoc in, in churches i mean the church is divided but um going back to um his question i mean so on my mother's side there's definitely um a strong man a strong spirit husband because my mother's mother's um bloodline like my grandmother and all her sisters none of them were married none of the women in that generation were married and then my um mother's um sister like he was talking about both of the uh, men that she was married to they both you know were deceased and in my case now it was my time to get married and i've been really really fighting this trauma and that's why it was you know tooth and nail to really get it out i came here back in may for the first time with dr uzo and the spirit didn't 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 come up it it, it didn't manifest also to for people to understand that spirits do hide if they know that it's their time to come out and depending on the ranking of the demon because again like i said earlier demons have rankings if it's a higher ranking demon an ancestral demon a demon that has been there before you even thought of it's not going to just come out just like that but the first time it came it what it didn't even show up it didn't even show up and the second time i came you know today is september 4th you know the first time when doctor was afraid it still didn't show up and we had prayed for 30 minutes prayed in the holy ghost sanctify the air and it still didn't show up mind you the same spirit that kept, that had shown up three times before when i went to other churches although they couldn't cast it up and then finally you know after listening you know to the holy spirit told me to sit down waited for you know things to to, to cool down and helped other people you know catching them on dead deliverance and then finally the spirit was able to show up and you know explaining that they they had married me my you know ancestors had married me in the family and that i belonged to them and it was it was not trying to let go it got very violent you know the video is also on youtube you know to watch the playback and you know explain that i i belong to them they won't let me go and that it didn't even want to release information as to where it really came from the only thing i believe that it said was just that they gave me married me in the family and that's the only information i was willing to give because that's how strong um that's how strong the, the the demon was but i also want christians to know that do not be deceived do not think that if you give your life to christ that is just about prosperity reading your bible and have a great day we are in a battle this is warfare and you need to take your prayer life seriously you need to take your deliverance seriously and you need to understand that this is not a joke you can be saved from the womb but guess what you still need deliverance and you can be possessed 
and spirit to do high to you if you need to monitor your dream life monitor your life look at your bloodline look at your family understand your family history understand your family background to really get through your problem and me i'm you know my parents are, are from west are west african but i was not born in africa so to all the you know people you know maybe watching you know you're born abroad but you know you have you know african um heritage don't think that your location determines whether you know you are exempt from 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 these spirits because as long as it is attached in your bloodline you will have the same battle i was born in the uk to for you to understand perspective my father is from nigeria my mother is from sierra leone i was born in the uk and i live in the us i've never even been to nigeria to understand how deep the i've never even been to nigeria but I'm fighting Nigerian battles. I wasn't raised in Sierra Leone, but I'm fighting Sierra Leonean battles. Why? Because it's in the bloodline. So don't think that as long as you, well, as long as I don't live in Africa, I live in America, I live in Canada, I live in, you know, UK, that those, those, those spirits can't harm me because I'm not on the land. No, that is misconception. Fault, that's false. That is literally false. As long as it is in your bloodline, you will have the same battle and you need you need deliverance from it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now to the glory of God. Another thing or the puzzle was that how come with everything you did, with all the manifestation, the people still couldn't cast it out. Even when the demons manifested. Remember, you were even saying that the demons on one occasion was telling the minister that they don't know the world, the world is not in them, they don't have the power, and they couldn't do anything. In fact, literally, they threw you out of the church and closed the door. Yep, they threw me out. In fact, you called me from the parking lot. It was, a, it was midnight. Yes. Just last Friday, right? Yes. Wow. Just, you know, can you tell us, you know, literally, you were saying that the demon wanted to go out but nobody could cast them out. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so during the third manifestation, the demon um, literally said, and I remember it, because the thing is, for anyone who has been in a manifested state before, mm -hmm. you can be in a manifested state and have a demon manifest, but you still have your own conscience working. Unless you've been in that experience, you won't understand what I'm talking about. But even though the demon was talking through me and I was manifested, in my own conscious spirit man i remember what the demon was saying even though i wasn't saying it but you so, couldn't control it but i couldn't control it yes correct but i remember because i was my eyes were open you know i was you knew what you were saying yeah i knew i was what I was saying but i didn't i couldn't control what i was saying because it wasn't me that was you know initially saying it and uh the demon said that i want to be cast out i want to be cast out but people don't realize that demons can't cast themselves out someone has to cast them out just like as the Bible explains it. So the demon said, I want to be cast out, I want to be cast out. But no one had the power to cast it out. So the demon remained. I was in a manifested state for over one hour. They had had me on the ground, had me seated to the point where they kicked me out, threw me out of the sanctuary and um, kicked me out and closed the door and left me in a manifested state. It's only the grace of God that I was able to come to and you know called up to uzo um for help but i was appalled and i just couldn't believe that this is what was really happening in the church of christ but i also you know thank god that it happened because i feel like the god allowed it to happen for me to shine my eyes and share you know this testimony with you for all of those watching to understand that a lot of churches don't have the power now hmm. And if you're in a church that, you know, you've, you've seen this happen, where you've seen, wow, I've seen that happen, where I saw someone, a demon manifest, and they couldn't cast it out, and they just left the person to be in a manifested state until they just eventually came to their natural self. If in a church like that, you need to really talk to God and figure out, you know, if you need to maybe leave that church or go somewhere where we can really find, you know, solution. Because a lot of the Christians are undelivered and really don't know what's really going on. There's a lot of people out here that are just focused on the wrong things it's not just about giving tithe or you know prosperity preaching 
we, there are some deep, deep battles that a lot of people can't really get to the root of. And that's why we're a lot of, we're, a lot of us, we're just in the situations that we are. And eventually we just give up because we don't know who to turn to. They really, really can't find someone with enough power to really help us with, with our, with our issues. What about people saying that, oh, once you read the word, once you confess the word or go for counseling, especially you don't need nobody. All you need the word is the word of God. All you need to do is to speak the word of God and then everything will be fine. Is it true? What about people that say, oh, true knowledge will my people be delivered? That if you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. So why is it that you couldn't get it done or cast out the demon through self-deliverance and through the word of God? Remember, you tried all those and you've been in the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you're a student on the world, both you and your sister. I mean, you love Jesus and you know the word. You are in a Bible believing church and, you know, you love your pastor, you love your church, but they couldn't help you. Yeah. And they are what church? What a faith church? Mm -hmm. And they read the Bible. Too. So throw more light on that because you see people making that assumption that, oh, just read the word. Once you're in the word, give me the word. Or, or they think the casting out of demon. Or casting out demon or expelling them is that very easy just speak the word take authority you see people saying there you know <laughs> can you like, yeah like, so self-deliverance is good but self self-deliverance can only get you so far see the thing is god has anointed you know you know prophets deliverance ministers to help people because the reality is uh, uh, we can't cast demons out ourselves as many times as that demon that I had manifested, I cannot cast it out of myself. Mm -hmm. That's why God has ordained people, you know, like Dr. Uzo or other high-level prophets, to cast it out for you. So don't think, okay, well, I'm just going to sit in my house, read my Bible, pray my prayers, and I'll, I'll get my full deliverance. No. Misconception. You, at some point, you need, you know, to consult the office of the right, you know, man or woman of God that is anointed and has the authority and has the power to deal with 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 um deliverance and you and then they can help you you know through the process and you know cast out and get to the and get to the root get to the root um of your problem but um you do need someone to help you and you do need administration um you know we were talking about mass deliverance mass deliverance can you know can be good nothing's wrong with that but depending on your case sometimes you just need one-on-one -on -one minister with the authority with the power to really help you with your problem because some and i've been to mass deliverance i'm so when i've been to multiple mass deliverances and i've seen through my experience that yes a demon can manifest in mass deliverance but a manifestation is not the only thing if they can't cast it out because there's 20 other people that are that have other demons that they're dealing with they're not gonna have time to individually handle your case and that's when you really need to take your own deliverance into your own hands and not just rely on something one pastor one minister one sister told you you know um, down the line so you need to really really find a relationship with you know with God to lead you in the right path and lead you to the right person man or woman of God that can help you get your complete deliverance and that's what I did you know my, my sister found you know it was online and I prayed about it and made sure that okay God is this where you want me to go and I just you know prayed fasted and and God led me to to finally get my solution and to the glory of God I'm delivered my deliverance is complete and that ancestral spirit husband, spirit, strong man, is completely gone, never to return again in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to tackle the area of uh, the demon speaking in tongues. Yes. Oh, yes. That's a good point. Demons can speak in tongues. Hmm. See, the thing is, people forget that anything in the light is imitated in the dark. So, including tongues, right? Just like how... You know, people, Pentecostals, who believe in speaking in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Demons, they also speak in tongues. And it's demonic tongues. And you need to get to a certain level. We need to decipher which is which. When they call for, when they call, when they speak in demonic tongues, they're calling for backup. They could be, you know, like you said, issuing curses on, on the ministers. And you know what they're saying? They're calling for backup. I was in um, the first and the third ministration, um, a manifestation, the first and the third manifestation that I had. I spoke in demonic tongues. And said specifically, I'm calling for backup. The first time is I'm calling for the third time I'm calling for backup. They're calling for backup. They're calling for reinforcement. They're calling for more demons to to show up. 
So when a demon is speaking in tongues, also know the level of that demon. Baby demons don't, unless I'm wrong, baby demons typically don't speak in tongues. So when you have a demon that is fully manifested, calling Christians out, saying they don't read their Bible, speaking the mind in tongues, that when you know you're dealing with a high level ranking demon and you don't have the power to deal with it, as I've seen from my experience, that demon is not going anywhere. And it, and, and it didn't. until that, was, that demon didn't go anywhere. Speaking in tongues, running his mouth, stay manifested for in you know for what you mean calling the uh minister bastard yeah saying calling a bastard cursing you know very violent hitting people kicking people saying won't let me go they don't let go water spirit spirit they don't want to let you go because they've been around forever if any of the concept of time honestly family background to them you're just another person that they marry these are spirits they don't really die they've been there forever so you now in you know in in your in your time want to just delete yourself from it or let it go they will fight back it is a battle now to the glory of god you will overcome but it will you know it will take time and do know that demons do speak in tongues don't you know be one of those christians that are like oh yeah demons can't speak in tongues demons can't call the name jesus a christian can't be possessed i'm telling you Use this as a testimony. I am a child of God. I've been born in a Christian home. I can speak in tongues. I have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I've spoken in demonic tongues in the manifested state. I have seen demons call people out. Demons can call the name Jesus. They say Jesus plain as day. And they know who is who in the spirit. So be very careful of the churches you attend. And be very careful of people that may be false. Be very mindful of prosperity preachings. Oh, demons don't exist. Oh, don't fast too much because you may disturb the demons. You have to be careful of churches that reiterate those things because you, if anything, it really can affect you. And, and you know, God forbid, you know, you, you, you leave this earth and never get your full deliverance because you've been deceived the entire time. What about those that says, you know, when we're exposing demons, we're talking too much about glorifying the devil and we don't glorify God. We're supposed to focus on what God is doing. Uh, just give me the word. It's only with the word that you need. What will you tell such preachers? Because it's like they can't even deliver a, far, a fly. What will you tell such preachers and their be bewitched or deceived or deluded congregation? Because they pass this denier to their congregation too. So what will you tell them? Because you were in a Bible believing church, you were so seed, you were even fasting, you were in the world. In fact, you were obedient in everything. I was so shocked because both you and your sister, you were so obedient Christian that I'm like, wow, um, these people uh, need to be helped. So, what would you tell such preacher that preach half truth and who believe that you can confess away the demon or cancel away the demon instead of casting it out, or even, you know, use the word? To cover everything that oh once you need uh you, are, you you need the word that's all you need or that jesus had defeated the devil we don't need to fight and we should go and relax and enjoy our salvation and then uh, you know until sh the shocker i mean explain can you throw more light on that before we end yes of course so always remember that the devil comes to steal to kill and destroy and his purpose on this earth, him and all his demons, is to literally drag as many people as he can to hell. So if, if he has to continue fighting you until you give up, he will literally do that. And I think that's why, through my experience, what I've seen, that's why I think a lot of Christians now, they're afraid to combat the enemy. Because they, don't get it wrong. When you go into battlefield, you are going to a battle zone. They will fight you. But always know that with the blood of Jesus, you will overcome. But a lot of I've seen that a lot of people, they're afraid. They don't want to confront demons. They don't want to cast them out. They don't want to agitate the camp of the enemy. Because, oh, you know, of the of, of the demonic retaliation. But you have, that's how you have to know who you are in Christ. And ask God for the power to overcome. The Lord has given us power to step to step on serpents and scorpions for a reason, not for for demons to manifest. And we're all scared because of what the demon can do. They should be afraid of us. Every Christian that believes that they are saved by the power of the Holy Ghost and through the blood of Jesus Christ should know that demons should technically be afraid of us. But now we're living in a world where we're afraid of demons. 
We are afraid of demons and we don't have the power. And they know they don't have the power. We see what is happening in churches now. Many people are lost. That's why many people just run in churches where that they'll just give them what they want to hear. And what they want to hear is life is good. Give your life to Christ. You know, buy a good, get a good job, get a good house and everything will be okay. And that is a lie. I'm sorry to say and I'm, you know, I'm proud and I'm bold that God's given me the courage to say that that is a lie. You see, many people in the church, 40s and the 50s, have never reached their full potential, never been married, can't have kids. Why? Because they've never been able to deal with the problem. And some, and I've even seen people literally die in churches, undelivered. They've gone here, they've gone here, and they literally are gone now. So, I mean... I've seen it. I've seen people that went to church and they're gone. They're, they're, they're dead because of all the battles. The enemy has literally finished them. So, I mean, I, I've just seen so much. And that's why I'm really passionate about, you know, telling people, whoever watches this video, you know, all over, you know, the world. I don't know, you know, but to know that this, this is not, this is not a joke. I've been to many churches and it's very, very few now that are able to really do deep deliverance, prophetic deliverance get to the root of your cause and really have the time, compassion, and power to deal with your individual case. So whenever, you know, you can make it down here to Georgia, you know, take take the time, pray about it, take the time, you know, make the sacrifice and come and come, you know, visit, you know, this powerful man of God that is here and willing and, and powerful enough to, to help you with your case. You know, he's been doing this for, you know, 40 years, right? So a lot of experience. Um, and is definitely someone that is, is true, um, true to God and, and will definitely, you know, help you, you know, with your case and won't give up on you on, on getting your, your complete and total deliverance. Let me ask you this before we close. Is it because the ministers are ignorant or they are not teaching it out of fear or out of their belief system? Of a materialistic worldview instead of supernatural view of scripture, or because of denial, or because of wrong doctrine, or because they don't have the training or the experience. What is really the problem with all these pastors and ministers and their folks are running around looking for deliverance because they can't get help in their church? I mean, yeah. the, what is really is it wrong doctrine? Is it denial which has been passed on to the congregation? Or is it because they are lying to them or wrong doctrine or wrong orientation or lack of deliverance training or sheer ignorance because of where the pastor themselves uh, have been that they themselves need deliverance and they don't know anything about dream or spiritual warfare or are not trained into the deep things of the spirit. And then even if they are they trained, they don't have the practical experience to know that no two deliverance are alike and that every case is different and that we need to depend totally and completely on the Holy Spirit to diagnose, decode, demystify, deliver us from this kind of evil. What is really the key issue and um, the key problem? Because some of these pastors are good or well-intentioned, but they yeah. can't help their folks. Yeah, I, literally the problem is all the above. Okay. It's a mix of, I mean, there's a lot of religiosity um, where yes, people um, think that, okay, well, as long as you dress a certain way, that that will protect you from mm. from demons you know the so false sense of security yes that okay well as long as you know you don't wear makeup you don't you know you cover your head you you know you wear a skirt that you know a demon you know you're, you're more holy you're holier than someone who does it and that you won't be attacked or you you know no demon can harm you that that's false information that's number one and a lot of people have been brainwashed i think the thing that really i think is well everything that you mentioned as far as the pastors but a lot of people are brainwashed and there are people that believe that pastors don't need deliverance. Mm. Who told you that? <laughs> Who told you that? Like, there are a lot of us that need deliverance. But I think as Christians, we've been so, like, brainwashed and doctrinated to believe that as long as someone has a title, pastor, prophet, minister, bishop, archbishop, that they're the most holy and they don't need deliverance. And, they, like, and it's like, no. I've seen pastors watch a demon manifest and they can't cast it out. I've seen prophets watch a demon manifest and they can't cast it out. So don't be deceived by the title. Um, you know, I've seen someone even the place I went to recently. I, you know, looked them online. They call themselves executive pastor. Hmm. 
executive pastor, but demon could not be cast out. So don't be deceived by the title of oh, this person, this person is that. No, a lot of people are being literally being deceived. Hmm. And a lot of people, to be honest, a lot of people won't like this message, but that is the reality. The problem is people do not want to accept the reality that they're being deceived. How long have you been in that church? And you really just say, I've been in this church five years, 10 years, 15 years. And how much progress have you made? Hmm. You, you haven't made any progress, but you don't want to accept the reality that you haven't made any progress in that church. You've been in the church forever. Oh, I've been, my, my, my mother used to go to this church. My family, this is my family church. Okay, that's fine. But how is it helping you? How far have you progressed in life? How, how, how much have you accomplished by just going to the church? Mm. The church is divided. The people don't believe that people need deliverance. Mm. People don't even believe in deliverance. Mm. They don't believe in deliverance. And they think that every pastor is anointed. Do not be deceived. Every pastor is not anointed. Every person that claims they're a man or woman of God is not always a man or woman of God. That's why you, as a child of God, you need to connect to the Holy Spirit and have the Holy Spirit ministry, okay, to decipher, okay, this person is true, this person is not true. Because if you don't have a relationship with Christ, then you won't be able to decipher. There are many false people roaming around now and many Christians that can't even know who is who, who is true, who is false. They just run into pastors because they look nice, have a nice suit, you know, you know, have a good message, teach prosperity, and think everything is okay. Mm. And there are people that are going to hell by the millions. We're not seeing the true reality. But look at what's everything that's happening in the world right now. Mm. This is not time to sleep. The church should be awake right now. It's time to be awake. We all should be Christian soldiers. We are in serious warfare. And the devil knows it, but the Christians don't. The believers don't. The people that claim they're children of God, they do not believe we're in serious warfare. We want to be clapping our hands and beating our feet. And there are people that are really suffering. People that really need deliverance. People that have been, I've seen people go to the same church for years. And they're still dealing with the same problem. Limitation, setback, stagnancy, spirit husband. And where, where can they go to find solution? They've done everything. I did everything. I went to church every Sunday. I paid my time. I I was even an usher in a church. I was even I was even a worker in a church. And they couldn't help me. They could only do so much. I did my self-deliverance prayers. I prayed. I fasted. And such a strong man was still sitting there well, well. And you know, wasn't able, you know, was didn't go, didn't go anywhere until finally, literally today was when the demon was finally cast out and yeah a lot of um i think a lot of pastors unfortunately have been deceived as well and they're just leading the flock to more deception that's really the problem the leaders are being deceived and they're bringing more people to continue the deception and as a human being you look up to the leader like, okay this person feels like okay demons can't manifest you know can't manifest christians can't be possessed demons can't call the name of jesus that okay this person who i look up to and should be a leader if they're correct then yeah that that can't be right and that's just not true. It's just not true. I've seen it time and time again. You need to really take the time. Look at the church that you're going to right now. Are they doing deep deliverance? Hmm. Do you feel you found solution? If you're not, if you're going to a church, you know, people of God, if you're going to a church and you, you haven't received any type of solution, you need to leave that church. You need to leave that church because what are you doing there? Don't waste your time. Hmm. Times of us, we don't have much time. Even the devil knows he doesn't have much time. That's why he's running rampant all over the earth and we're sleeping. So I just thank God. I give a glory to God. I give a glory to Dr. Uzda for, for, you know, for helping me. This is a very, very difficult situation. I've tried everything. The devil has tried to stop me multiple times. I even almost missed my flight to come, just to come here. I was, you know, telling him, but I'm here. I, my, you know, deliverance is complete. Uh, the power of the Holy Ghost, and I will maintain my deliverance. And you know, to all of you out there that you know want to, you know, seek the Lord, find the Lord, reach out. Then you know, reach out to to the ministry, reach out, you know, on you to watch Doctor Uzo's videos. He has many, very powerful teachings about you know, spirit husband, marine spirits, how demons enter, you know, how to maintain your deliverance. Many, many powerful videos. That just watching the videos alone, you can't even get your, you know, 
you can start your deliverance there. They're very helpful. Take the time to really watch them, learn from them, and see, you know, where your situation falls in play and find time to, you know, to seek help that you need and, and the Lord will deliver you as long as you have faith because that is also the key. Because if you don't believe you can ever be delivered, then the Lord will deliver you. You also have to have faith that, yes, I am a child of God. I do not belong to this this kingdom. I do not belong to the Marian kingdom. I denounce, I delink myself from you. I am a child of God. I belong to Christ and the Lord shall surely deliver me in the name of Jesus. Amen. So do you have uh, any parting word for us? Any advice? Any parting word? Having um, spoken eloquently so far and, you know, expressly and clearly and then openly to us where I'm so grateful, I'm so thankful. Do you have anything for our audience? And, you know, there are people out there that say, okay, how am I going to be delivered? This spirit husband has been very stubborn. I've gone from places, uh, place to place, and I didn't get my deliverance because I saw your persistence. Even when you were um, thrown out of the church after the third manifestation, I'm surprised that you didn't even give up. You were still sowing. You were still moving on. You were still believing God. You were still listening to the word. You even came all the way. So is there any parting advice to give our, you know, audience and our listeners hope because you know god is a god of encouragement his kingdom is in the here and now his kingdom is instant this immediate effect but people forget the law of process so really you know parting word a word of hope a word of encouragement because your t testimony is very touchy can you really um you know uh tell us give us parting word uh that we you know take home so to speak Yes, and also I, I I think I mentioned earlier, but also do want to stress about how demons do hide because I just remembered now when I went um, a few years ago to one of the churches that I go to, and I I was telling you know telling the minister like hey I feel like I need deliverance I'm having these type of dreams, and you know they told me that I actually didn't need deliverance, hmm. and looking back now it's probably because well one they didn't have you know the authority or the power to even see the spirit, but because it was so strong and the spirit was hiding. They couldn't even see it even though it was there. And that's probably maybe some of you were, you know that something is wrong. You know that I, I need deliverance, but you don't know where to find the help. Or when you go to get help, the, the demon doesn't manifest or it hides. You know, so, um, but as far as parting words, one thing I've learned through my experience, through my Christian journey, um, it's definitely been, you know, uh, you know, years for me to learn these things. But uh, don't be loyal to a church just because of the people mm -hmm. um wow. because and it sounds crazy to say that because at the end of the day people are not the ones that can deliver it's god that can deliver you so yes. you need to be loyal to god so if some like there was one church that at some point i felt it was my time it was my time to leave and i you know i even had dreams that where i kind of got confirmation from god that okay you've done everything you can in this church but they, they can't really you know they can only help you so much and you know i prayed about it got the confirmation through my dream and i left that church and you can always, you know, visit people just to say hi. But I don't want people to get stuck because I've seen it happen where people are literally are just in a church because it's convenient, because mm -hmm. just a place that you're used to going on a Sunday, because it's just a routine thing, because oh, all my friends go there. All my don't just st stick to a church or go to a church because of that. You need to go to a church that can give you solution, and if the church can give you solution. Then you need to leave that church or find another church. You don't, have, you know, maybe you don't want to leave it completely. Maybe okay, you do like the people that goes there, and that's fine. But don't only stay there because of that and you you you're not getting what you need you're not getting your solution you're not getting resolution and you're there for years and then you want to figure out why nothing's working for you and you wonder why so do not be loyal to a church just because it's a church find a relationship with god and have god direct you to where you need to be and he will literally find the ministers of just with Dr. Uzo, it was God that was able to, you know, locate him and, and God ministered, you know, to me. And for me to come from Maryland to Georgia, I don't even know Dr. Uzo from anywhere. Don't know, I have any relationship. But because I have a relationship with God and I was able, you know, was able to get me in the right direction, I found my way all the way from the state of Maryland all the way down to Georgia in this church here just for one man of God to minister to me. And, you know, for a, uh, a final word for all the people out there that, for one, you know, uh, just to start, you know, give your life to Christ, repent of your sins, and, you know, start afresh. You know, and the main thing I've learned is you really need to have a relationship with God. 
it's one thing you can always you know of course you know have relationship with pastors ministers but because at the end of the day we are all god's children and he's the one that created us man did not create us we did not create ourselves we need to always go to the throne of grace and have a deep connection with god because that is how you're really going to really fulfill fulfill your destiny fulfill your glory and 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 be the person that god has destined you to be without any you know sickness sorrow setback stagnation limitation ancestral powers and and marine spirits and things of that sort so thank you all you know for listening to this uh, to this long testimony i know many people may not agree but that's okay as long as i know i said what was the truth based on my reality based on my experience based on what god has told me is it the people that i know at least one person watching this video will learn from this learn from this testimony and be able to to change lives and get the deliverance so, so god bless you all <laughs> thank you very much i'm i'm thankful i want to summarize child of god yes. the heartbeat of this is that we should know about our dream yes. because that's the root of parent world the dream is like your spiritual monitor it's your spiritual sensor it's a glimpse or window to the supernatural and the subconscious it's actually a fortress that tells you what is going on in your life in reality because the supernatural controls rules over rules or even ruins the natural and also you have to do prayer warfare very important so don't listen to the doctrine or pet doctrine or what you want to hear that oh if you live fully the demons will leave you alone because people forget ancestral sins and powers because our sister here knows the lord very well i mean him and the sister i'm so impressed about them they are in the world they love jesus christ they are very active in their church i think you are an usher yeah in, the, usher, in, the, usher, yeah. in the church serving in the church loving jesus giving obeying their pastor obeying the teaching you know so worshiping, the lord. worshiping <laughs> the lord in spirit and in truth and yet they may be because of ancestral sins and powers that they don't even know about why not for the fact that God opened her eyes, she hears from God, she persisted, walk in faith. So don't listen to pastors that tell you, once you live righteous, the demon won't leave you alone. Once you know the word or confess the word, the demon will leave you alone. Uh, Counseling is not the same thing as deliverance. Praying and fasting may not even dislodge or eliminate the demon. Another thing is that denial of demons does not make them go away. Another thing, more importantly is that a lot of pastors themselves need deliverance and they will deny and tell you that you don't need deliverance and then sometimes they are not only mistaken they don't know even any better they can't even interpret your dream or the good and most of them are not deliverance prophet they can be pastors they can even be prayer ministers or prayer warriors they can even be in a living church speak the word and deny the word or even speak incomplete word or incomplete or partial revelation or even tell you that once you hear the word of God, you are delivered. Ignorance defies its own part. It's not because they are bad. It's because they are blind. It's not because they are incorrect. It's because they are incomplete. There's something they are uh, not getting. They are missing. So if they don't decode your dream, they can teach you every other thing. They don't even know anything about witchcraft because they have sister even have that component because some lady somewhere was even trying to cause them that they will not get married and they, they were cursed and all that. And, and I broke that curse. I said, no, who will say and it come to pass when the Lord have not spoken? So child of God, be warned that look at your life. Look at your dream. Look at what is on ground. Don't listen to some of the pastor telling you pet doctrine and pet theories or dogmas or what you want to hear. Go deep and then ignore them and listen to the Holy Spirit. God that created us know that salvation is different from deliverance eh, for the most part and that Jesus taught the word. Jesus preached the word. Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. He set the captives free and he restored us and came to give us abundant life. It's a total integrated package. The gospel of the kingdom involves everything. You see, it's a total integrated experience. When you get the gospel of the kingdom, the true gospel of the kingdom, Deliverance is there. Healing is there. Breakthrough is there. Miracle of turnaround is there. Anytime there is delay or denial or dragging or blockade or, you know, if something is prolonged or protracted or bleeding problem or you have suffered so much, 
Don't listen to the fact that, oh, or religious spirit, that God's time is the best. Oh, stay in there. You are going through job experience. Don't listen to crap. Go to the Holy Spirit. Go to God. The word of God may not give you everything because you say the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. Remember, all scripture is in God, but not all God in script is in scripture. All scripture is truth. Not all truth are in the scripture. So there are things, especially marine spirit, they don't teach us all these things in church. We have to know it or learn it by ourselves. And it comes by revelation and not by religion. So God bless you, child of God. I thank God for this testimony. I know it's long, but I can't <laughs> wait for you to get your own testimony. Um, encourage our sister army. I'm so grateful that we did this interview. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>